I'm Chief Cheryl Victoria. This is Waco PD on the beat. Whether it's crime or just getting to know the Waco Police Department, we're here to talk about things that matter most to you. Hello, Waco, and welcome to Waco PD on the beat. I'm Sierra Shipley, the Public Information Officer for the Waco Police Department. And I'm also Janae Draper with the Neighborhood Engagement Team. Ha <laughs> ha, you did it. I got it that time. This week, we are talking about our new, not new animal control unit. Mm. It's under the PD now. We yeah, have Christina we have, Thane we have, here. They, ha- they have joined the club yes. with the PD. So, <laughs> uh, my good friend Christina Thane, welcome. Oh, you know why? I, t- I knew it. Try again. How about now? Oh, we can, I can hear you. Now. You know what? It has been a minute since we've done these, so we're like, you know, it's like new equipment <laughs> coming in. So the uh, the the microphone level was off. Yes, I turned it up though. You did. It's amazing <laughs> how uh, when I said is it on, and I was like, yeah, sure is. So it's not. <laughs> it's good to be back. Okay, it's good to be back. All right. So animal control unit and or team that we now. Is yeah. it a unit or a team? We've had a, a, a podcast in the back where, or in the past where, I don't know I said back, but in the past where it was like a unit or a team. So do you like to be called the animal control unit or the animal control team? I mean, it makes me no difference, but most through you guys call us ACU. Oh, control yeah. Unit, yeah. So. unit. I know. Kay. They're just, they're always the unit, but Jeremy Angel. Jeremy <laughs> Angel. A team. We've got to <laughs> ask from now on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a little bit about you. Um, how long have you wor- worked in the ACU and with the city of Waco? I think I hit my four-year mark April like 5th or 6th. So we're, we're at almost at five. Nice. Like, That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And you've always worked in animal control unit? Or this position that this you're position, in now? This position, yeah. I started out at the shelter, uh, Kennel Tech, mm-hmm. and then I uh, caught the attention of the supervisor at that time uh, we were in some kind of meeting or something and I said something in regards to the laws or something and I just caught her attention and she actually approached me because uh, they had an opening and I applied got it and been there ever since oh nice so your position right now is you're the supervisor yes correct yeah She's the big boss. She's the boss. <laughs> big boss. <laughs> <laughs> so so as as a supervisor, what uh you know, what do you do day to day? I can tell you that in animal control, no two days are the same. It's mm-hmm. always different. I mean, you know, basically we run the calls that are get put in. We dispatch our own currently. And so I just kind of keep an eye on my team, help them out as much as I can while doing all the, you know, supervisor mumbo jumbo that kind of comes along with this this aspect of it. So speaking of team, how many people make up your team? Currently, I have three with uh, one we're looking at starting next month, and then I still have one more open position that actually just got given to me uh, here recently. So when it's all said and done and I'm fully staffed, I'll have five underneath me. Oh, nice. And I know we have yeah. questions, but um, no, I might ahead. just kind of just be going. Just so you, yeah, I'm just kind of <laughs> winging it, which is kind of how I work it. So, um, so you said like y'all dispatch y'all's y'all's own calls. So when people call in, because I know sometimes working for us, like we'll get animal control calls, but do they go directly to y'all, or kind of how does all that work when you say you dispatch your own? Yeah, so I mean we have our own little system. So people will call into us, and we'll talk to them, get all the information, put it into our system, and it'll dispatch it, you know, into the the program that we use. But, I mean, we also come get calls through you guys, too, so dispatch will, if they can't. If it's something not like 911 related, uh, usually whoever's working that day will just call me directly. That way I can go ahead and get someone out there as quicker. Nice. Okay, I'll follow the script now. It's just, no, no. I was, I was into it. Good. I'm like. The, the questions are just as kind of like a backbone in case, in case we need some. It's some the, it's like Pirates of the Caribbean. They're more like guidelines. There you go. They're it's guidelines. That's very true. That's, yeah, that's very true. It. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to try to me so up at some point. I am. So. I am. Right, that's right. what I'm so, known for. So how would you describe, you know, what the animal control unit does to any community member? I mean, on a pretty much broad spectrum, you know, we're the enforcer of any state and local laws when it comes to animals. Um, That can go anywhere from, you know, animal cruelty to just the basics of, you know, make sure you have your animal spay-neutered, microchipped, and current on its rabies vaccine. Nice. Um, 
we deal with wildlife. If it's, you know, in someone's house or if they've got a nuisance and they've got it trapped in the backyard, we'll go pick it up and relocate it. Injured, mm. sick, aggressive. Don't call me for no snakes, though. I was fixing to oh, say. So when snakes. we, because I have gotten dispatched to many snake calls, possum calls, and raccoon calls. Mm-hmm. And I am like, what am I to do <laughs> with this? So now I know I can call you. You can call us. 24-7. 24-7. Yes. <laughs> all right. So now that we're all on the same page, because I was like, hmm. But she might not come out if it's a snake. <laughs> She'll send someone else. <laughs> it's a snake a snake. <laughs> My favorite Jeff. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and and the animal control unit, you guys work, or it's it's kind of an extension also with the shelter, right? Or yeah, how, so we're basically, it's all animal services. So under animal services, you have the clinic that takes care of all the medical stuff. You have us that kind of handles like the streets. And then you've got the shelter staff who takes care of all of our animals at the shelter. Plus we contract with, the, you know, the Humane Society who handles all of the adoption and foster, foster and rescues to get them out. Mm-hmm. Oh, so it's like all kinds of services, but in one location. But yes. they do all kinds of different yeah. different things. Okay. that Yeah. Makes sense. It does. I honestly, like, I never knew that there was so much involved in that area. I, I mean, I didn't even know y'all were located there till recently. I know so, so much I pay attention. <laughs> but um, I knew that we, like, the shelter was there and that, you know, if we picked up a dog or something, we'd take it there. But to actually know that everybody worked there or there was a clinic, I didn't know all that. So it's right, very interesting. Right. And you guys just joined or kind of merged with us here at the PD. Mm-hmm. So was that kind of exciting to learn I mean I feel like a lot of times like you said people call us for any type of like dog nuisance they might not think to call you guys so is it an easier streamlined communication process when it it comes to that kind of stuff now I mean I don't think necessarily as far as communication go anything that really has you know changed uh I've had a really good connection with you know dispatch um to to do that but having the commander there as you know there's a lot of perks to that. You mm-hmm. guys have a lot of access to things that we don't have access to. And, I mean, we've already started using kind of that relationship and started building that. And I actually did a ride-along with an officer oh. back on Easter. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, that was very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd that go? Man, the first call that we got, we were there for, like, we did – it was, like, six hours. A six hours. Yep, yep, those yeah. – yeah, that's about right. Sounds, I was going to say, <laughs> sounds about right. You work a 10-hour shift, but you might have one or two calls if you get an in-depth call wow. in that. So did you get any uh, animal services calls while you were? Actually, we didn't. Oh. Really? Oh, man, that would have been perfect, too. What's, yeah. What's, like, the most common animal service call that someone is needing your guys' help for? A dog. Mm. It's out running loose. A loose dog. Nine out of ten times, you know. A lot of people are just not accustomed to dealing with an animal on the streets, mm-hmm. you know, so they don't know the signs to look for. If it's, you know, aggressive, how aggressive is it? Is it just territorial because you're getting close to, you know, its yard? Is it actually aggressive where, you know, you, you take that chance that it's going to come at you? You know, is it just terrified of you? So it's barking and growling to kind of get you to back off, you know, of it. Um, so, I mean, that's where, you know, we kind of come in that we can come out and assess it and determine what's best for, you know, that dog. Because our goal is not to take them. You know, we don't right. we don't want to take people's dogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want them to just stay home. Uh, but, you know, safety on the streets is also a big part of what we do, too. So Yeah, absolutely. So y'all don't just do, you know, dogs, you know, at large or running loose. Um, y'all deal with, you know, dogs in yards and stuff like that, whether it's um, you said, like, the laws, whether it's, like, malnutrition, uh, animal abuse, or aggressive dogs or stuff like that. So y'all kind of do the whole array. Oh, yeah. That. You know, top to bottom. Um, Texas just passed, you know, a law that's not too long ago uh, about chains. Can't use chains anymore. You can still have it tethered. It just has to meet certain requirements to be tethered. Just the chain material, you know, you're not supposed to use. So a lot of people aren't aware of that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have a dog that is tethered, it's got to have access to, you know, shade, shelter, and water. People don't realize that. You know, my dog was just outside for five minutes to use the restroom. Well, technically, if it's unattended and you're not out there with it, it's got to have these, you know, aspects with it. So a big thing for us is just when we go out to a call, the first thing is to educate them. Hey, this is, you know, so you're aware this is what needs to happen. You know, how much time do you need? you know, before we kind of come back and just make sure that everything's, you know, squared away. So we really try to work with them as much as possible to say, hey, this is what we need you to correct. You know, we'll come back in, you know, a couple of weeks, check on it and see how things are going. 
um, and just kind of go from there. Some situations get resolved really quick and some of them don't. Man, take a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. So why is it important that the city has a, a unit like you guys? We're the ones that, you know, you guys handle the major, you know, scary stuff, but we kind of are that that backup that handles the animal aspect of it all, um, whether it's, you know, cats, dogs, livestock, snakes, you know, raccoons, raccoons all, all of the, the critters that, you know, could be found in Waco, whether it's keeping the streets safe from them, uh, keeping the animal themselves safe, educating. I mean, city has great programs available, you know, free services out the wazoo to, you know, how to try to keep the population of animals down so that we don't have so many that are out running the streets or don't have a home or, you know. And I think you said it really well there. It's just almost like education and kind of understanding, like, the importance of, you know, knowing to spay and neuter your animals um, or getting them microchips or, you know, just the different resources that you have. Like how you said, you know, if you're out walking, like, people don't want to maybe be walking their kids and there's, like, a dog, you know, walking around that may make them nervous or something like that but like to have just to kind of understand like the different um what's the word I'm looking for just just the different education that you have like not only with your own dog but like education pieces with like stray dogs and stuff like that I think is very um very very important and I really appreciate that and I'm actually really excited that we have done I just been wanting to use this word a merger because you hear it with, like, big companies. <laughs> and so I've just been waiting it's to, like, <laughs> it's the merger. Oh, my goodness. So I've been waiting to use that. But I'm, like, actually really excited because we do work a lot together. Mm-hmm. And I think having um, having y'all, you know, combined with us now, I don't want to say underneath this because you're not, you're a partner with us, um, is actually going to be very beneficial to just the community in general, but also for each of us um, to learn more about what y'all do um, and also, y'all can learn more about what we do and, like, work together. So, I'm excited. Yeah. So, are you guys considered an officer, a civilian employee? What's, like, the title or? I mean, I think that really depends on who you ask. <laughs> uh, you know, some people don't like to call us officers. Um, some people will go through, you know, it's animal, your animal care. or But your animal care officer or, you know, the... I guess technical term that, you know, is known throughout is animal control officer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You, know, you have to be, you have to go through training, you have to get certified, sure. you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's nothing compared to what you guys have to go through, but. But it's I still the it's title. Just the, yeah. It's just yeah. the title. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like you public word. information yeah. officer, exactly. yeah. you know, animal exactly. control officer, police yeah. officer, like w- these are all our titles. Yeah. You know? So, well, yeah, I wasn't sure about the, like the official title of that. Yeah. yeah. So. It's animal control unit ACU with a. Animal control, control officer. officer. There like you it. go. Yeah. I like it. That's good. What's like the craziest animal you've had to, or you've gotten a call on? Ooh, like I can, random. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've got tons of those stories, but go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> um, I think for me, since I've been there, um, my previous supervisor, she actually called me out one night to help her. There was a, I think it was a house fire and there ended up being a, large yellow I think it was a python I mean she was big and beautiful um not the word I would use to describe it but continue (laughs) (laughs) she was super docile very Uh sweet um but that's probably like the craziest animal although I did get a call a couple weeks ago that there was a I think it's called a wallaby a wallaby yeah. <laughs> you got to yeah. say it with the Australian you say it with the accent. <laughs> <laughs> You're fantastic at that, by the way. <laughs> what about me? I thought I did really good. <laughs> no. No, no like she okay. had it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was out running loose on the streets. Uh, so the owner called and was Stop like, hey. Right now. That is just awesome. Just in case you get a call. We can have one of those? I don't, I don't know. Is that a th- is that a thing? Is that a thing? Is that a thing? <laughs> Can we get... Also, I'm I curious mean, to see who thinks that we have the better Australian accent when it comes to wallaby. She says you do, but I'm curious. That that who, if you're listening to this, I want you to put it in the comments. She's the only one in the room. Who? No, I'm, I'm putting it out to to our listeners. <laughs> I want it in the comments. As give who it, has give the, it your best one. A wallaby? Okay. <laughs> okay, that was a little bit better. <laughs> it's a wallaby. It's a wallaby. All right. Well, what, <laughs> we're I'm, we're going to leave it to the to the poll. We're okay. Poll okay. Well, it. What a poll that. So, um, but hold on. I really, really cool. do have. I really do okay, got to give some story. mad props to oh, animal control. Story. No, yeah. because oh. there has been one call, and it was years ago. Um, it was me and my partner. We got called to a, an aggressive dog, 
and and literally, she's terrified of dogs, and, I, and I'm not terrified of dogs. I've always been like oh, really good dogs. with dogs. And it was saying that this dog it was out of the fence, and it was uh, chasing these people into their house. So we get to the call, and I'm like, "Well, I don't see, you know, I don't, I don't see a dog out or anything." The next thing I know, I hear like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" And I'm like, "Oh!" And my partner freezes, and I'm looking, but it's like behind a wooden fence. Like it's okay, it's behind a wooden fence. Next thing I know. This dog, like, jumps, so this is a wooden fence in front and, like, a chain link on the side. And it jumps the corner, and it is just, like, barreling straight for us. And I just turn to her, and Ooh. I'm like, run. <laughs> and, like, right next door uh, it, on the neighbor's house is a pickup truck. And so we literally, like, haul it right to the truck and, like, jump in the bed of the truck. And this dog was, oh. So the people who actually called in the call, that was their truck. So they, like, open their front door, and they're looking at us. And we're like, we'll be right with you shortly. <laughs> like, <laughs> not getting out of this truck yet. So we call animal control, and we're trying to, like, how do we say on the radio we need them here quickly? Because we're stuck in the bed of a truck. Like, this dog <laughs> will not let us out. Because it keeps jumping back into the yard. But as soon as we look, like, almost get out, it will jump back over and come to the truck. Oh, dang. Um, and so we're like, we are not moving. Which clearly, had the dog known, like, the truck, it was a small truck. It clearly could have jumped in the truck if it wanted to. But I was um, gonna say if it can jump that fence, can it just like get in the Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But we were just, you know, I don't know, terrified. So but Animal Control finally gets out and and I don't remember her name, but she was just like I mean, she had like her rope thing and she was just just brave and I was like and she just got out of the truck and I was like, No, like it'll eat you. <laughs> Be careful. She's like, I got it. And she did, like, no fear, no nothing. I was like, this is awesome. So I had to get That's some mad great, props yeah. because I was like, ooh, and she did. She came and got the dog and um but it was that was my scariest dog story. How do you guys get how do you guys get over that? I mean, I'm sure there's like a little bit of fear that comes every oh, now a, and then, right? There's always fear. You're always going to be afraid because I mean, let's face it, this dog has got teeth. Mm-hmm. You know, it can do some serious damage. I've seen dogs do some serious damage, but I mean, that's kind of where, you know, we have to, you guys put y'all's life on the line when you go out on a call, right? Mm-hmm. Well, we, we have to do the same thing. Like, other people are, you know, in jeopardy at that point. We need to get that animal and get it off the streets so that it's no longer, you know, posing any kind of threats to anybody. So you just kind of yeah, y'all were my it up heroes and go that for day. it. <laughs> so, anyways, that's my, that was my, uh, my props yeah. and kudos story. So, okay. <coughs> we're good. I had, I, to, like that. I had to give some props But you didn't have to take a python out of a burning house, though. Mm-hmm. No, a beautiful python. I did not. Which I think that's really interesting, too, that they still would call you guys, and it wouldn't just be like the firefighters that just say, well, let's pick it up and go. Like, it's interesting to know that you guys would still get called out to that. That's really cool. It is really cool. No, I think that's awesome. And the wallaby. And the wallaby. (laughs) I'm be saying that all day. You're getting better. I'm getting better. I'm You're getting better. Mm -hmm. I have to look up what that looks like. Because I feel like I can picture it, but I don't think I can picture it. I'm picturing a koala bear, but I don't think that's right. Did you know there's, and I can't remember the name of them, but there's an animal in Australia that it is illegal to hug because they're maybe endangered. I can't remember why it's illegal, but they are so affectionate that they will come up and try and hug you, but you can't hug them back. (gasps) That would be so hard. Yes. I can't remember the name of it, but they look like little... Little hug. chip care bears, like. care bear <laughs> things. <laughs> oh my, that would be so hard. I know. That's interesting. Yes. You cannot hug them. You can't hug them, but all they want is affection. And you gonna get in trouble if you hug back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we would all get in trouble with that. Yeah, I was right? just gonna say, <laughs> like, I'm like, I go to jail for that one. There's like five of them <laughs> in your arms. <laughs> Oh my goodness! So, what uh, can uh, what what can the community do to to maybe help your guys's job easier? Oh man, spay and neuter, okay. spay and neuter, microchip, and you know, rabies. Getting that vaccine vaccine is actually a state law. Like you have to have that done. Mm-hmm. We recommend all of the others, but the rabies is like the the number one. Um, but you know, we've got a lot of puppies, lots of puppies, lots of kittens. Really, spay and neuter is the the biggest thing, um, and you know, keep. Do what you have to to keep your animal contained. If you can't keep it contained, you, you know, Humane, uh, Humane Society's got an outreach program that tries to help with, like, fencing. We can offer, you know, suggestions. So keeping them on your property, spay and neuter them, microchip and rabies is, like, the number 
number one things. Yeah. And you have to microchip your pets, right? Isn't that a yeah? The ordinance? city says you have to spay and neuter, microchip, and current rabies vaccine, which the city pays for. The city will. I was just going to say there might be cost. you know really? people might be afraid yes. of costs and stuff, but to know that the city pays for that. Yeah, and um, animal control will even come pick them up. We'll pick them up that morning, take them wow. to their appointment, get it all done. You don't have to pay a fee, and then we'll bring them back that afternoon when they're you know done with everything. Oh, wow. Like we'll literally do it all for you, not a dime to your you know pocketbook. And I guess that happens at the clinic that we have. So we actually contract with it's called ABC oh, yeah. Animal it, Birth Control Clinic. Yes, they're a, they're also a low you know spay and neuter clinic, uh, vaccines and all of that. But that's who we take the animals to. They get it everything okay. done there, and then we pick them up in the afternoon. Okay. Wow. That's awesome. That is really awesome. Yeah. They also do TNR. City will pay for TNR, which is a trap neuter return for cats, for, like, all oh, of the yeah. annoying outside cats. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. You know? Mm-hmm. So is it, like, do it, would they just call you if, let's say, they know somebody with a lot of cats or if they have cats? Um, like, how, how does that process work? The, I mean, they can do it either way. We, we, so we cannot force somebody to partake in the TNR program. We really try to kind of coax them and, you know, educate them as to why. Because let's face it, you have one mama cat, you know, she can have a huge litter. And then all of those that are females, they're just going to keep reproducing. So yeah. the city will pay for them to get, they'll get fixed, they'll get up to date on their shots, and then they'll actually get a little tip of their ear taken off. It's called ear tip. And that just signifies yeah. that they've been through that program. Oh, okay. So ABC will loan out traps. Um, they have a good program for that. Every time you catch that cat in the trap, you can either take it to ABC and have it done, or you can call us and we'll come pick it up and we'll take it, transport it, and then it'll go through the program and it'll come back and get released into like that area. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Hmm. That is really cool. Why, why should people spay, neuter, microchip their animals? I mean, the whole, you know, I want to say the whole country is dealing with overpopulation of animals. We have a lot. Um, You know, nobody wants any kind of, you know, negative aspects to happen because there are too many animals and not enough homes for them. So spay and neuter is the best way to not only, like, kind of help medically because the older they get, you know, you start worrying about issues with, you know, um, their reproductive organs and all that, so it's best to just take them out. But you keep, you know, unwanted animals. If you have a female and she's in your yard – and some stray male comes up, and then she accidentally gets pregnant. Well, now you've got a whole litter of puppies that, you know, you weren't accounting for. You try to rehome where you can. The rest comes to the shelter. And then, you know, that just kind of adds up. And if you think about how many people we have here in Waco, if you have even just one dog to every household. Yeah. That's a lot. Absolutely. Wow. Do you notice that well, – I, I, I've noticed that – we in our area specifically had a, have a lot of Facebook pages that are like Waco Lost and Found or stuff like that. Do you think that those Facebook pages help you guys out as far as when animals do get out? I feel like a lot of times when someone posts about it, it's usually pretty quick when that animal finds its owner again. I think that's the best way to not have to call us. Um, posting it on social media, whether it's like your next door apps for like your neighborhood, your Central Texas Lost and Found, uh, Crips for Canines is a huge advocate for animals in all of McLennan County. Um, they, they do a lot of really good work. Um, Humane Society also has programs where, like, if you find a dog and you're willing to keep it, you can bring it up there. They'll give it, um, like, some vaccines and stuff, and then you take it home, hold it for a couple of days, still can't find an owner, then you can, you know, bring it back in. But it kind of gives that extra step to, to try to help find somewhere for it to go instead of having to come to the shelter. I feel like a job like yours, you have to really like animals. It's like, you gotta be, you gotta I was going to say, you, that's got to be kind of hard, too, sometimes. Like. So, I mean, I, I admit that some of the calls are rough. You know, sometimes it's hard, and, you know, you can only do so much. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things that I would like to be able to do, but, you know, we just don't have the authority to do. But, you know, now that we're kind of in cahoots. <laughs> With the merger. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since the merger. <laughs> I don't know why I like that word so oh much. Oh, my goodness. So then, yeah, you guys can call out law enforcement if if those situations do become too severe for for y'all to handle. Yeah, and I mean, most of the time, people, like we talked about earlier, just need to be educated on what the laws are. Or, you know, their dog, you know, it looks like it's in a rough shape. Cool, well, here's some things we can try to do, like, Mm over-the-counter so you don't have to go spend $1,000 at a vet. Because that might be a lot of the concerns for people, you know, is is cost. 
Um, but I think, like you said, education and just realizing, hey, there's a lot of programs out there. Mm-hmm. Um, just spay, neuter, microchip, the whole thing that the city will pay for, not on your dime, and then uh, education programs to, like, help, you know, so you're not spending thousands of dollars, you know, just um, I think that would help the community all in general, just knowing that. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Have you always been, like, an animal lover growing up? So, like, I will, not to sound corny, but, like, this is my, like, dream job. So if I, I have two fields that I love, criminal justice and animals. And this basically, oh, like, Oh, it's, like, totally them. covers this everything. This larger? This is <laughs> it. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. That really is. Cool. Do you have any of your own pets? Do you have a python or a wallaby? Yeah. Or a dog? Or you cat? know, my kid has been begging me for a snake for a long time. Mm-hmm. We're, we're discussing it at the moment, but, you know, we've pretty much had dogs and cats our, my entire life and then my kiddo's entire life, too. So yeah. right now we have two dogs that are – her dog is a pain in my rear, but <laughs> into pieces. What, what, kind, of, what kind of dogs are they? Uh, mine is like an Australian Shepherd mix. Uh, she's 14 – now oh my goodness and then uh my kiddo has like a, a corgi type thing oh <laughs> <laughs> i follow a corgi on instagram mm-hmm. it's like the potato or something like that oh i don't goodness. it's so cute my little like my instagram feed is literally like animal videos like do- cute dog and animal videos love it i okay, think don't christina is started. leaning more toward the australian shepherd oh, <laughs> oh yeah but he already knows like when she's older and she's going off to college that dog is going with her oh my like, goodness she is taking her dog with her i'll, I'll uh, keep mine oh my gosh that's that is too funny cute. that's funny yeah no we had like one we had one family dog and that was always it, it didn't go with anyone we just all moved out dog stayed home <laughs> <laughs> I I'm sure that's dogs. realistically how it'll happen. Yeah. She'll go off to college, not have time, you know, and then he'll end up staying with me. Oh, you know. man. What are their names? Chase is hers, and then Dixie is mine. Dixie. I love that as a dog's name. I was gonna say, Dixie is a pretty name. Yeah. Chase, I would think of, like, makes me think of Paw Patrol. And that's exactly why his name is Chase. Okay. Is it, he does not match the there Chase dog on Paw Patrol. No, he does not. Say, not Chase, the Chase isn't a corgi. <laughs> <laughs> Are there corgis in Paw Patrol? <laughs> I don't know. My kid was obsessed with Paw Patrol at the time that we got him. Mm. So that's what she chose. Named it Chase. Yep. And the police mm. dog. It works. I like that. Mm. That's good. That's good. Well, um, I'm trying to think. What should you know the community do if they see an animal around or if they're in danger of any type of aggressive animal call us <laughs> i mean call you know, <laughs> what's, the, what's the phone number 254-750-1765 okay 1765 yeah Thank animal control are y'all so here's the next question are y'all 24 hours is that number a 24-hour number, or is that like a... The number is available 24 hours, but if it's after hours or on, you know, weekends, as of right now, um, that's when they'll need to call, you know, the non-emergency police line. Um, okay. You know, 911 is obviously only for a life-threatening situation, and that's the only time we want people to call that number. But, you know, they do have yeah. um, dispatchers available for after hours or on weekends. And then we also have ACUs on call. So if dispatch gets a call, it's not something that, like, officers need to go out to, but, you know, they need to get in contact with one of us. Whoever is on call, they'll give them that information. And then if it's deemed necessary, you know, we'll reach out to that person and be like, hey, what's going on? Okay, this is what we can do right now. This is what we can do to follow up and kind of just go from there. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And that's really important that you said the non-emergency number because I do feel like a lot of people call 911 just for, like, a dog walking – down the street, which, you know, could be dangerous because the dog could be hit and whatnot. But like you said, it's that active live threat. The imminent danger. The imminent yes. danger. So, yeah, make sure you guys call that non-emergency number if if you guys do need some help. Yeah, because they'll still answer. They will oh, 100% yeah. 100% still oh, they'll answer, answer. So, yeah. Okay, very good. Anything else that you can think of before we I mean, I think we pretty much covered so start to finish so what about like for animal lovers like me like if we want to kind of help out or any like volunteer opportunities what are some things that we can do um to kind of do that do we just get in touch with the animal shelter do we get in touch with the clinic do we get in touch with y'all like if we want to come in and kind of help like what are some things that we can do i mean we're always looking for donations for one Uh, Mm -hmm. if you can't donate your time you know the humane society usually has like a list of what we need um or what the animals need you know that we could we could really use 
But the Humane Society has a huge, you know, foster program for dogs or cats that need to be, you know, in a temporary spot, or they have a big volunteer program. You know, they so say if we just want to come and just play with dogs and puppies, you can come and like walk <laughs> and, yep. Yep. I mean, you, I might actually put you to work. Oh, but, come you know, on. I just want to have the fun. I just want to be in charge of the puppy play day and just like play with dogs. I would like to be in charge of the wallaby. <laughs> 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 yes. That's the, the second a wallaby comes into the, the shelter, you. you just let me know. <laughs> I am waiting for a sugar glider call. <gasps> No. Have y'all had one of those yet? Here? Have you experienced one of those? I personally have not, no. But, I mean, I know that, like, previous um, people that have been there, I think, like, lemurs. lemurs? There was almost, like, a white Swing fox looking thing. That, yeah. Someone did have Dang. a pet raccoon, which, by the way, is illegal. Please do not have any. A can't, pet raccoon? Yeah. No pet raccoons. No. That we know is illegal. Yeah. So say, I have had raccoon calls where there's a raccoon in the house. And I'm oh. like, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I would be like, I would be like, I am sorry, sir. I am moving out. Please, here's the keys. Here's the key. I'm breaking my lease. Um, the raccoon is taking over. Yeah. <laughs> Please bill him. <laughs> That's why we have job security. Exactly. Mm. Man. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you, Christina, mm-hmm. for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate I appreciate it. it. It's been appreciate a lot of fun. See, it wasn't so bad, was it? It wasn't I'm going to call you out. Yeah, bad. you were a little nervous. So <laughs> I'm going to call her out make sure everybody knows that. So make sure that you let her know what how, how good of a job she did. So I appreciate that. Yes. I'm good with – I've realized I'm okay with the audio. I'm glad yeah, it's just the audio. audio this, this go around. Visual. Visual. plug. We'll get visuals back one day. Yes, one day, One day. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us here on Waco PD on the Beat. I'm Sierra Shipley, the Public Information Officer. And I'm Officer Janae Draper with the Neighborhood Engagement Team. Have a great day, Waco. Adios. Waco PD on the beat, the heartbeat serving 